What is the main objective of a security information and event management system? Which access control model make use of security labels and clearance levels to determine access rights? Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISC Square's Cutting Edge Cybersecurity Certification Practice Exam Series. At Certification Terminal, we're committed to being your ultimate certification Q&A hub. We're here to support you on every step of your certification journey. If you find value in our content, don't forget to show your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anyone who could benefit from it. Now, let's get started on your path to becoming a certified cybersecurity pro. Question number one. What are the primary choices available for risk treatment? Option A, elimination, avoidance, and transfer. Option B, acceptance, mitigation, and transfer. Option C, acceptance, avoidance, and transfer. Option D, elimination, mitigation, and transfer. The correct answer is. Option B, acceptance, mitigation, and transfer. Acceptance involves acknowledging the existence of the risk and deciding to bear the consequences if it occurs. Mitigation involves taking actions to reduce the impact or likelihood of the risk. Transfer involves shifting the risk to another party, often through insurance or contractual agreements. This combination provides a comprehensive approach to managing risks by acknowledging them, taking steps to reduce their impact, and considering external options for handling them. Option A, elimination, avoidance, and transfer is incorrect. Elimination and avoidance are similar concepts, both aiming to remove or stay away from the risk. Transfer is a valid risk treatment option, but elimination and avoidance are not always practical or possible for all risks. Option C, acceptance, avoidance, and transfer is incorrect. Acceptance and transfer are valid risk treatment options, but this option excludes mitigation, which is an important strategy for reducing the impact or likelihood of risks. Avoidance, similar to elimination, may not always be practical or possible for all risks. Avoidance implies completely steering clear of the risk, which might not be feasible in some situations. Option D, elimination, mitigation, and transfer is incorrect. Elimination involves completely removing the risk, which may not always be possible or practical. Mitigation is a valid risk treatment option that involves reducing the impact or likelihood of the risk. Transfer, again, is a valid strategy. This option is not as comprehensive as it lacks acceptance. Question number two. What is the primary goal and significance of providing access control training? Option A, to enforce strong password policies. Option B, to educate employees on the importance of security. Option C, to configure firewalls and intrusion detection systems. Option D, to manage encryption keys. The correct answer is. Option B, to educate employees on the importance of security. Access control training aims to educate individuals on securing digital assets, information systems, and networks. This includes understanding the importance of access controls, such as user authentication and authorization, to prevent unauthorized access. While enforcing strong password policies, option A, configure firewalls, option C, and managing encryption keys, option D, are important aspects of overall security, they may be part of broader security training rather than specific to access control training. Question number three. What are the various tasks and actions that may be required to be done for a change request? Option A, evaluating the change. Option B, scheduling the change. Option C, implementing the change. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer is. Option D, all of the above. It's important to note that the change request process is often part of a broader change management framework, which aims to ensure that changes are planned, controlled, and executed in a way that minimizes risks and disruptions to the organization. Understanding why the change did not achieve its intended outcomes is vital, 
for making informed decisions during the rollback. Proper documentation is essential for tracking changes, understanding their impact, and facilitating effective communication among team members. Ensuring that the procedures for the rollback are well-defined and can be executed effectively is crucial to minimize risks during the rollback process. This involves planning when the rollback will take place. It's important to choose a time that minimizes disruption to the organization. This might be a step needed if the change was not implemented correctly in the first place or if certain aspects of the change need adjustment before the rollback. Before implementing a rollback, it's crucial to thoroughly test the change to understand why it is not working as intended and identify potential issues. Question number four. As a HR manager, Edwin has been granted access to the HR department's confidential documents, but not to the finance department's documents. In this scenario, which of the following cybersecurity processes is demonstrated? Option A, firewall. Option B, authentication. Option C, encryption. Option D, authorization. The correct answer is Option D, authorization. Authorization is the process of granting or denying access rights and permissions to a user, system, or application. In this scenario, Edwin being granted access to the HR department's confidential documents, but not to the finance department's documents demonstrates an authorization process. Edwin has been authorized to access specific resources based on his role or responsibilities within the organization. Option A, firewall, is incorrect. A firewall is a network security device that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. It is not directly related to granting access to specific documents within an organization. Option B, authentication, is incorrect. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, system, or device. While authentication is part of the overall access control process, it doesn't specifically address the granular level of permissions for accessing specific documents within different departments. Option C, encryption, is incorrect. Encryption is the process of converting data into a secure format to prevent unauthorized access. While it is crucial for protecting the confidentiality of data, it does not determine who is authorized to access specific documents within an organization. Question number five. What measures can be taken to mitigate the impact of a ransomware attack? Option A, delete all emails with attachments. Option B, use a different email client to prevent malicious attachments. Option C, add more administrative users to the domain admins group. Option D, limit the use of administrator privileges to only when required. The correct answer is. Option D, limit the use of administrator privileges to only when required. Limiting the use of administrator privileges helps mitigate the impact of a ransomware attack by reducing the attack surface. If a user account with elevated privileges is compromised, the ransomware may have a more limited scope of damage. Users should only have administrative privileges when necessary to perform specific tasks. Option A, delete all emails with attachments, is incorrect. Deleting all emails with attachments is a reactive measure and does not address the root cause or prevent the spread of ransomware. Ransomware can be distributed through various vectors and relying solely on deleting emails may not provide effective protection. Option B, use a different email client to prevent malicious attachments, is incorrect. While changing email clients may have some impact on the types of attachments processed, it is not a comprehensive solution to ransomware attacks. Attackers can use various methods to deliver malicious content, and relying solely on changing email clients may not be sufficient. Option C, add more administrative users to the domain admins group, is incorrect. Adding more administrative users to the domain admins group is generally not a recommended security practice. It increases the attack surface and potential impact if any of these accounts are compromised. This action can escalate the severity of a ransomware attack 
by providing more targets with elevated privileges. Question number six. What practice is discouraged as a security best practice in the context of incident response? Option A, ad hoc response to incidents. Option B, proactive communication with stakeholders. Option C, refusing to have an incident response plan. Option D, conducting post-mortem reviews. The correct answer is. Option C, refusing to have an incident response plan. Refusing to have an incident response plan leaves an organization vulnerable to a range of negative consequences, including extended downtime, data loss, legal and regulatory penalties, damage to reputation, and increased recovery costs. It also hinders the ability to respond quickly and effectively to emerging threats, making the organization more susceptible to the evolving landscape of cybersecurity risks. Question number seven. What is the main objective of a security information and event management system? Option A, to implement access controls and user authentication. Option B, to encrypt sensitive data for secure transmission. Option C, to manage network devices and configurations. Option D, to provide real-time monitoring and alerting for security incidents. The correct answer is. Option D, to provide real-time monitoring and alerting for security incidents. The primary objective of a security information and event management system is to provide real-time monitoring of security events, analyze them for potential security incidents, and generate alerts. Security information and event management systems help organizations detect and respond to security threats by aggregating and correlating data from various sources. Option A, to implement access controls and user authentication, is incorrect. While access controls and user authentication are crucial components of overall cybersecurity, they are not the primary focus of a security information and event management system. Security information and event management systems primarily focus on collecting, correlating, and analyzing security-related information and events. Option B, to encrypt sensitive data for secure transmission, is incorrect. Encryption of sensitive data is an important security measure, but it is not the primary objective of a security information and event management system. Security information and event management systems are designed for monitoring and analyzing security events and incidents. Option C, to manage network devices and configurations, is incorrect. Network device management and configuration are important tasks, but are not the primary purpose of a security information and event management system. Security information and event management systems are more concerned with monitoring and analyzing security-related events and log data. Question number eight. Which of the following approaches provides the optimal balance between convenience and security? Option A, token-based authentication. Option B, biometric authentication. Option C, password-based authentication. Option D, smart card authentication. The correct answer is. Option A, token-based authentication. Token-based authentication involves the use of physical devices or software tokens to generate one-time passcodes. It provides a good balance between convenience and security. Users have a tangible device such as a key fob or mobile app that generates codes, making it convenient, but it still adds an extra layer of security beyond traditional passwords. Option B, biometric authentication, is incorrect. Biometric authentication, such as fingerprint or facial recognition, can be highly secure, but its convenience may vary. Some users find it very convenient, while others may experience challenges, such as environmental factors affecting recognition accuracy. Option C, password-based authentication, is incorrect. Password-based authentication is widely used and convenient for users, but it may not provide optimal security, especially if weak passwords are chosen. Passwords can be vulnerable to various attacks like brute force or phishing. Option D, smart card authentication, is incorrect. 
Smart card authentication involves the use of physical cards containing integrated circuits. While it offers enhanced security, it may be less convenient for users who have to carry a physical card. The optimal balance between convenience and security depends on user preferences and the specific context. Question number 9. Which access control model make use of security labels and clearance levels to determine access rights? Option A, Mandatory Access Control, MAC. Option B, Role-Based Access Control, or BAC. Option C, Attribute-Based Access Control, a BAC. Option D, Discretionary Access Control, DAC. The correct answer is. Option A, Mandatory Access Control. In mandatory access control, access rights are determined by the security labels assigned to resources and the clearance levels of users. The system enforces access policies based on predefined rules, and users have limited control over their access permissions. The labels and clearances are often associated with sensitivity and classification levels. Option B, role based access control, is incorrect. Role based access control, or BAC, assigns access rights based on a user's role within the organization. While our BAC is effective for managing permissions based on job responsibilities, it does not specifically involve security labels and clearance levels as the primary criteria for access determination. Option C, attribute based access control, is incorrect. Attribute based access control, a BAC, uses various attributes, user attributes, resource attributes, and environmental attributes to make access control decisions. While it provides a flexible approach to access control, it does not necessarily rely on security labels and clearance levels as the primary criteria. Option D, discretionary access control, is incorrect. In discretionary access control, DAC, access rights are at the discretion of the resource owner. The owner has the flexibility to determine who can access the resource and what permissions they have. It is based on the owner's discretion rather than security labels and clearance levels. Question number 10. Out of the following options, what is an essential element of an emergency response plan, ERP? Option A, financial accounting procedures. Option B, data backup plan. Option C, Communication plan. Option D, employee training plan. The correct answer is. Option C, communication plan. A communication plan is a fundamental element of an emergency response plan. It outlines how information will be communicated internally and externally during an emergency. Effective communication is essential for coordinating response efforts, providing information to stakeholders, and ensuring the safety of employees. Option A, financial accounting procedures, is incorrect. While financial accounting procedures are important for business continuity, they are not typically considered a core element of an emergency response plan. Financial procedures may be addressed in a broader business continuity plan, but are not specific to immediate emergency response actions. Option B, data backup plan, is incorrect. A data backup plan is crucial for data recovery and business continuity, but it focuses more on IT and data management aspects rather than the immediate response to emergencies. Data backup plans are usually part of a broader continuity strategy. Option D, employee training plan, is incorrect. While employee training is important for overall emergency preparedness, it is a broader concept that extends beyond immediate response. Employee training plans are often part of an organization's efforts to ensure that employees are educated on emergency procedures, but they are not the sole element of the immediate response plan. That is all in this video, thank you, we'll meet in the next video, bye.